my great challenge and welcome back to my garden yes it is finally finally the return of gardening season <sighs> it was a long winter it's still cold outside um, and I'm going to start sowing my seeds indoors but I am doing something a little bit different this year if you remember I am doing the back to Eden gardening method Basically, I am covering my entire soil, which has been amended last year, with wood chips. And they spent the entire year and the winter on top of my soil. They are slowly uh, decomposing, if that's the word. Anyway, they're rotting away or decaying and giving me all the nutrients that I need. So the first year when you do the Back to Eden gardening, and by the way, I'll put a video down below uh, from the original uh, inventor of the um, I don't know if it's invented it it's been going on for years but anyway uh, there's a video down below if you want to watch it it's very interesting so basically the first year you get brand new soil that you just amended it hasn't really worked with the chips yet but this year is year two and technically I'm starting to get really really good soil so I took a peek the other day and let me tell you my soil is super super black and dark and it's the perfect soil for vegetables I cannot wait we do have a problem <laughs> is that I totally changed my diet I am on an anti-inflammatory diet so there's a lot of vegetables that I grow usually year after year that I cannot grow this year well or at least will grow in only limited quantities and that's tomatoes, peppers and eggplant. Uh, they are um, categorized as nightshade vegetables and they are actually giving you a lot of inflammation. So I'm going to grow them in limited quantities so that the rest of the family can have them but I am basically taking my portion out so it's one plant basically anyway so what else am I doing different this year I'm starting indoors which I did last year but last year I started indoors in this kitchen which really doesn't get any sunshine okay um, I do have lights you know I have two skylight and three window including one bay window but the Sun is only for about an hour and a half early in the morning and then it turns to the other side of the house the one room or two rooms that get the most sun are Edward and William's room and William volunteered to be the greenhouse for the next three weeks or so so I'm gonna start seeds today and I have a um, sofa table type thing that I, you know like a um, narrow long table it's not that long but I have one of those in the garage that I found on the street a couple of years ago um, I'm going to put it in front of his window and every day my seeds will get natural sunlight. They will be much warmer than they are here. So hopefully it will work out. So um, I looked at my calendar. We are in zone 6B. I can start outdoors for some crops like um, cabbage, turnips, things like this. But we still have frost dates. Um, the forsythia just got in bloom yeah let me show you i don't know if you can see these are my neighbors for cecia so they just started to bloom this week and usually that's an indicator um you know when the for cecia out the narcissus are still in uh, buds i don't have flowers yet uh, so we'll see what happens but usually when the for cecia are out maybe we get another frost date or two but i'm not taking any chances so what am i doing today uh, let me show you my seeds and how I'm planting them and that would be it for this video because um, there's not much it's just me putting seeds inside the little pods and yes I am in the kitchen okay so I'm going to do the same thing I did last year, except uh, that I cannot find the bottom trays. These are supposed to go inside green trays, um, and then, you know, that collects water. I can't find them, so guess what? We're going to use them without. So these are my little um, start the seeds, you know, cubbies, whatever you want to call them. And they work with these, and I really like those last year. Uh, they are called rapid 
Wooters. Let me open it. And they are basically those little pods like this and you put your seed in there, you get them wet. I got 50 in here, um, so I'm going to start with 50 seeds. Uh, just a word of caution, all seeds are not alike. I I am buying uh, seeds from various um, companies. They are mostly survival seeds and what it means is that they are non-GMO. Most of them are heirloom seeds and they are also open pollinated. And if you don't know what that means, I'll give you an example. They come in little packets like this and these are, uh, oh my glasses, I think these are turnips. Parsnips, let's say. Ah, oh, my glasses. Parsnips. Okay. Open pollinated means that once your plant comes to seeds and you have flowers and then um, you collect the seeds, you can keep the seeds, save them, and plant for the following year. If you go to a supermarket and you have a tomato, let's say it's a Jersey tomato, okay, and you really, really like Jersey tomatoes. You can collect the seeds from that tomato. Chances are you may get a plant, but you won't get fruit because those are GMO and close pollinated, uh, meaning that they do not propagate. All right. So if you're going to do a garden and you want to be serious about the types of vegetables that you have and you want to be not frugal, but part of the self-reliant or self-sufficient um, population like I'm trying to do, try to get your seeds from um, non-GMO, open pollinated, survival type uh, shops. There's plenty of them out there um, and usually they would tell you, if you go on Etsy you can get some of them, uh, usually they would tell you open pollinated, non-GMO. Yeah. So this is my vault <laughs> and these are all my seeds. Um, I got a lot of them and they are in envelopes uh, like this one in ground March 29th to April 5th for the deal. I'm going to wait a little bit because again we're going to have another frost. Um, this one would be in ground too and then more in ground and then I have indoors March 13th. They were too early last year. I did the um, peppers last year. It was too early so what I'm going to do is probably get more of those pods and about two weeks start those. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. I have five trays and I've divided it into five stacks. So one is going to be golden acre cabbage and the other one is going to be Walton broccoli. And if you remember from last year, the broccoli and the cabbage was a disaster. <laughs> it was a fiasco. I didn't eat a single broccoli. And I didn't eat a single cabbage um, because they got to be really leggy early in the season um, and then I planted them in an area that was super super wet uh, that didn't have enough sunshine and I may have started them too early but anyway I, I really blame um, the way I started those seeds so hopefully this year I will have cabbage and broccoli so cross your fingers the next one this goes here the next one are the collards. Uh, so they are Vates collards and I actually did get some last year. Uh, spinach, didn't get a single spinach last year. I planted them directly into the ground around this time and um, they never really took off. Um, it didn't work out. So this year I'm doing them indoors. I'm starting them indoors and Swiss chard. Swiss chard, we got a lot of it last year and that was great. Uh, I planted them in front of the um, cucumbers and it worked really really good. Next one are the turnips. So turnips last year I started them in ground. Um, they took a long time and I only got two uh, turnips all together and I started them in ground at about this time so it was way too early so I'm going to start them indoors. I have golden bowl turnip, purple turnips, uh, American purple top rutabaga and celeriac and I'm going to talk about those because some of you may not have heard of those particular root vegetables. So I have two favorite vegetables. I have turnip which you know from last year and I have celeriac and celeriac you can find at all in the supermarket here. I've never seen it. 
Uh, and every time I go back to France, the one of the few things that I ask my mom to make sure that I get to eat while I'm there is uh, something called remoulade or um, celery raf, which is basically the same thing. So celeriac is part of the celery family, hence the name, but it's a root. Um, see, the celery is not really a root, it's like a vegetable that comes out. But this one, and I'll put pictures right here so you can see what it looks like, is a big root, kind of like the turnip or the rutabaga. It's pretty big, it's actually about this big. It's like a, uh, the size of a grapefruit when it's at full maturity. And you can eat it several ways. I personally like it shredded in a salad with, um, you know, maybe some sour cream and some salt and pepper and a little bit of vinegar or lemon juice. That's the way I love it. Or you can eat it as steamed vegetable and it will replace the potato. So if you want to do something like a very nice um, alternative to mashed potatoes, you could do celeriac mixed with turnip or mixed with rutabaga or you could do um, different roots or sweet potato. It's a very nutritious um, vegetable and actually the leaves themselves are very much like celery. They look like celery stalks and they are much stronger in terms of the flavor than regular celery stalks. So it's a good idea to have celeriac because you can have uh, the best of both worlds. You can have some celery stalks to use in your soup, so your bouillon or you know whatever you're doing if you put them in salad, or you can use the root. So it's a better vegetable than actual celery, in my opinion. And I'm super excited. I finally found some. And I got it from uh, Seed Kingdom at seedkingdom.com. Okay, so that's celeriac. Rutabaga, ha, there's a whole history of rutabaga in France. Um, back during World War II and the occupation of uh, France, North of France really, really struggled to get um, food. In order for them to have a cheap vegetable that was uh, as nutritious and tasted somewhat like a potato, there was a lot of rutabaga going on. And I think the French swore off <laughs> rutabaga right after the liberation of France and said, well, never eat rutabaga ever again, because uh, th that's the running joke about rutabaga. So this one is the American Purple Top. I'll put a picture right here. It's kind of the same thing as celeriac. It gives you uh, a big bowl, same thing than turnip. It's delicious as a potato um, alternative for mashed potatoes, but it's also very good to make fries with. So if you are on a diet that tells you that you cannot have any kind of potatoes, rutabaga, you can make fries out of it. You just uh, cut them like you would a potato and season them like you would season french fries in your air fryer and you would get a really nice alternative to potatoes. So rutabaga is um, something that I'm looking forward to planting with the celeriac this year. The fifth one is going to be uh, leek. I doubt it's going to work, uh, but we're going to see. I have been successful with leeks in the past, but I had bought them as already uh, planted, you know, like as, uh, uh, what are you calling, seedlings, at the stores. And around this time of the year, I haven't found a single one yet. So I'm going to start them from seeds and we'll see how that works out. The only thing with leeks is that you have to keep mounding the dirt um, around it so you can have maximum white and the least amount of green. Um, I put my greens in the soup anyway. And the rest is lettuce. I have three kinds. Um, I have ruby leaf, a black seeded Simpson, and butter crunch butterhead. Okay, so I'm gonna start the lettuce. For all of those seeds, my plan is to start them indoor. And then in about three to four weeks, I'll put them in the ground and I will add on the same row new seeds from this batch directly into the ground. And what it's gonna give me is two harvests. I have an early harvest from the ones that I've started today, and then I have a later harvest from the one that I'm starting a month later, okay? It's kind of, it's not a rotation, but you get the idea. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the lettuce, so that way I can extend my lettuce season. Um, same thing with muslin. Okay, are you ready? I'm gonna show you how to do this, and then um, I'll be done. 
and hopefully I get plenty of sunshine to start these guys. So I'm going to start by taking my little uh, pods here and I'm going to put them directly into here. I don't know if you've noticed but they do have a hole right there in the middle and that's where you put your seed. one two three four trays with those pods and I have uh, two extra pods all right so I have 48 and then I have an extra tray here that I have um, filled up with soil mixed soil and I've already wetted it so that's gonna be probably for my lettuce and then I have these two guys here I have to figure out what to do with them so um let me see how many of each do i want to make remember i'm adding some directly into the ground later on and you see i'm mad at myself for losing the green parts i have no idea where they are i looked all over the garage because technically you put those in those cups and then you leave one of those open and you put the water in it and it gives them uh continuous moisture but that's all right i'll do the old-fashioned way where i just water them on a regular basis so what I'm doing here is considering an entire row here. All right. So for this particular uh, set, I'm putting my little marker right here, and this one says gold turnip, purple turnip, and rutabaga. That's it. 
uh, started my seeds and they are in Willie's room. So of course today is a great day so you're not being able to see uh, how much sun gets in that bedroom but hopefully we get a better day tomorrow. And then uh, I also have a sweet potato uh, in water right now to see if I can grow some sweet potato vine um, and maybe have some sweet potatoes. You never know. Okay, I'm playing around. Um, I'm getting serious about this gardening. You saw me the other day in my day in the life, I cut down my roses, I cleaned up a little bit. I have some sorrel uh, that survived the winter. Sorrel is like indestructible. Um, I'm probably gonna cut some tonight to make a soup and that would be it. So what's gonna happen is that when these guys um, get a little bit bigger, but I feel that they're still too small to be inside um, ground, I will move them to the greenhouse which is outside and they will go there during the day and at night I'll bring them back um, and then I think I'm gonna start my tomatoes and my green peppers and eggplant and oh, peas and beans and all of that if I don't start them in the ground I think I'm gonna start them in the greenhouse uh, so that they are a little bit more protected from the weather and that would be it I'm looking forward to my growing season I hope you are too don't forget to subscribe right here in the corner for updates and see what I'm doing with my garden this year for 2022. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook um, for more updates. I'll probably post pictures here and there. And then there's my great challenge gift if you're looking for channel merchandise like this t-shirt with all four of us. I actually really, really like this one that Scott designed. And not to forget a my Etsy shop um Frenchie and Tubby for vintage finds. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and comment down below let me know how you started and if you have like me your seeds in other rooms of the house because you have to follow the sun. I'm intrigued to see uh, where people put their seeds. I know that there's some in bedrooms, in offices, I've here bathrooms, um, garage, um, all sorts of places wherever sun um, has its best orientation for you starting for starting seeds let me know down below where yours are and i will talk to you later thank you for watching bye hey, it's me and guess what click that thumbs up if you really like this video thumbs down twice if you didn't you can also share my video if you really really liked it or save it to watch later also you can subscribe to my channel but don't forget to click that bell button so you are always notified when I post a new video. Thank you for watching.